Hello everyone and welcome to the Sadrill. Today we're going to showcase my Beatrooper Synchro deck profile. In this version of the deck I'm not including the DPE package, trying to make this deck more budget friendly and heavily reliant more on the insect part of the deck. Friendly reminder before we start to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And without further ado, let's dive right into the deck profile. We're going to start things off with the triple copies of Beatrooper Scout Buggy. It's definitely one of the best normal summons of the deck because it allows you to special summon another copy of itself, either from the hand, graveyard or deck. And the only drawback with this card is that it locks you into insects, but you can circumvent that by going to pick a Falina and then link it away to special summon the monster that you need. Now moving on to the best extender in the deck, we're playing triple copies of Scale Bomber. This card is the Kajimunza Knight of the deck, that is also acts as a Ghost Ogre. When you normally special summon another insect, you can special summon this card from the hand, and while on the field when a monster effect is activated, you can destroy the monster that activated the effect. Now moving on to the hand trap and extender of the deck, we're playing double copies of Sting Lancer. You can special summon this card from your hand, by shuffling one insect monster from your graveyard and one monster from your opponent's graveyard, and then search a bit trooper spell or trap. And now moving to the last bit trooper card, we're playing a single copy of Assault Roller, one copy of Mighty Neptune. Both of these cards are great extenders that you can easily search by sending resonant insects or go keep all to the graveyard. And moving on to the newest addition in the deck, we're playing triple copies of Dragon Bite. When this card is normal or special summon, you can special summon another insect from your hand. You can also banish another insect from the graveyard to raise the level of another insect you control. Also, this card is a tuner that easily allows you to go for hard plays or go into Baron and Savage. I highly suggest you running this card. And moving on to one of the best cards in the deck is triple copies of Resonance Insect. When this card is sent to the graveyard, you can set a level 5 or higher insect monster, and when this card is banished, you can foolish an insect to the graveyard. And all these effects are hard ones per turn, meaning that you can use them as many times as possible. Now moving on to the last package that we're playing, is triple copies of Stink the Poison. This card is amazing because on summon it allows you to search for another battle wasp, and while on field you can tribute another insect so you can negate one monster effect on the field. Definitely one of the best starters or extenders that you can have. And speaking of great extenders, we're playing triple copies of Sting the Bullseye. If you control an insect, you can special summon for free from your hand, and then you can activate its effect to burn your opponent for 200. An amazing effect, especially on time. We're also playing a single copy of the Rapid Fire, because on summon it can revive back a level 3 or lower insect, and you can extend after that. Moving on to the generic extenders, we're playing a single copy of Doom Dozer that can special summon itself by banishing two insects monster from the graveyard, and it's also a level 8 that comes up in the combos. We're also playing double copies of Gokipol because it's really essential in the combos, and it's not a bad card to open, especially if you have the Dragon Bite in your hand. It is also a form of disruption if you search the next card. If you search a normal insect monster with the effect of Gokipol, you can special summon to your side of the field and then destroy a monster your opponent controls. And moving on to the best hand trap in the deck, we're playing triple copies of Retaliating C. When your opponent would special summon a monster with the effect of a spell card, you can special summon this card from your hand to the field, and then it acts as a marker cosmos. Also, when sent to the graveyard, you can usually search for Gokipol or Resonance Insect. Now, moving on to the spells of the deck, we're playing a single copy of Beatrooper Formation and double copies of Beatrooper Descent. Since we have a heavy insect lineup, we're including Formation because it's an extender that allows you to revive back an insect from the graveyard, and Formation is another extender and buffer removal. I'm also playing a single copy of Beatrooper Flying Sting because it's the best counter trap in the deck, and you don't mind to discard it and reset it with its own effect. And for the last cards in the deck, I'm playing triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. This card is really free in the deck because you want to send Send your monsters to the graveyard, and in some scenarios you want to trigger their effects. It is also really powerful, especially against the brave packets and the DPE. And moving on to the last generic hand trap that we're playing in the deck, we're playing triple copies of Drone and Lockbird. With so many decks playing the adventure packets, this card allows you to lock them from searching any other cards that they need, and then on the following turn you cannot decay them. And surprisingly, this card is really great against rogue matchups that usually rely heavily on searching. So I highly suggest you running it inside your main deck. Now moving on to the extra deck, we're playing a single copy of Falmeras, so we can link off our little monsters. We're playing a single copy of Crystal Hockey Fibrax because it's an essential part of the combos. I'm also playing a single copy of Win the Wind Channeler, so we can steal our opponent's Baron or their Griffon Rider. Moving to the rest of the Link 2s, we're playing a single copy of Pitrooper Armorhorn because this card allows you to get an additional normal summon, and while in the graveyard, you can banish 3 insects, including the Resonance Insect. We're also playing a single copy of Picofalina because it allows us to equip the Resonance Insect and trigger its effect when sent to the graveyard. Moving on to the Link 3 lineup, we're playing double copies of Seraph and Papillion because this card allows us to get past the Insect Restriction, and at the same time, it allows us to disrupt our opponent during their turn. I'm also including a single copy of Nightmare Unicorn because it's a great card going second, and of course, I'm playing a single copy of Invisible Atlas that allows us to beam out any insect that we need. And for the last link force in the deck, I'm playing a single copy of Axis Cotoker and one copy of a Pollution Bow of the Goddess. Especially Axis 
Stoker is essential the tick when going second. I'm also playing a single cow with Cicada King that we can easily make with two scout baggies, and this way we can circumvent the insect lock. Having another monster effect negate and a revival from the graveyard is really beneficial, especially in the grind games. For the last two cards in the deck, we're playing a single copy of Poor Old Savage Dragon and a single copy of Paron the Third. Baron is the card that we usually go into, so we can protect our combos from Nibiru, and Poor Old Savage is great for the grind game. And moving on to the side deck, I'm playing triple copies of Dark Lure No More. This card is really great against combo decks that don't run into the side lock or Flanderies. For the spice of the side deck, I'm playing triple copies of Raigeki. Usually, most of the decks include only one Omni Negate, so you can easily bait that and after that wipe their entire field. Also, no one is expecting to see this card, so you can catch many people off guard. And moving on, I'm including triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. This card is really versatile when going first or second, it plays around easily against the triple tactics talent and shuts down the Hulk and Rordon plays. Now you can choose to play either of these kaijus that you have. Gadarla is the most versatile of the two, and both of them are searchable through the effect of Resonance Insect. For the last cards in the side deck, I'm playing double copies of Effect Veiler and double copies of Cosmic Cyclone. And if you want more back or removal, you can swap the Veilers for two copies of Cosmic Cyclone. And let's move on to some combos you can do with the deck. We're gonna start things off by normal summoning the Dragon Bite, and then special summon from the hand the copy of Sting the Poison. You can then use the effect of Sting the Poison to search a copy of Pin the Bullseye, and special summon it to our side of the field, and use the effect to burn our opponent for 200. Now what we need to do is to get a copy of Crystal Hulky Fibrax to our side of the field, but before we do that, we need to go for a copy of Cavalina, so we can easily get access to Resonance Insect. We're going to use Pin the Bullseye and Stink the Poison to special summon a copy of Insect or Cavalina, and activate its effect to discard the card from the hand, so we can equip Resonance Insect to an insect we have on the field. Now we're going to equip it to Dragon Bite. After that, since we control the tuner to our side of the field, we can link away the Cavalina and the Dragon Bite, so we can special summon a copy of Crystal Hulky Fibrax. This way we can chain block the effect of Hulk, we can get a copy of Doom Dozer with the effect of Resonance Insect and then special summon a copy of Sting the Poison. Now we can also special summon the copy of Doom Dozer by banishing two insects, including the Resonance Insect from the graveyard. That's going to trigger the effect of Resonance Insect when it gets banished, so we can send an insect to the graveyard. In this scenario, we're going to send a copy of Cockypole, and Cockypole effect is going to activate, and depending if you're going first or second, you have several options. In this scenario, we're going to search for a copy of Assault Roller, and before we special summon it, we can use the Doom Dozer and the Sting the Poison, so we can secret summon for a copy of Baron the Fleur. This way we can have an Omni Negate to our side of the field, and even if we happen to use it during our turn, we can revive a monster from the graveyard. Now we can special summon the copy of Assault Roller by balancing a random insect from the grave, and after that we can use the copy of Assault Roller and the copy of Hulk, so we can special summon a Link 3 monster, in this instance we're going to go for a copy of Seraphim Papillion. But since you used one insect monster, it's going to get only one counter, meaning that you can use its effect only once. During the standby phase, we're going to revive back the Sting the Poison, and then we're going to trigger Sting the Poison's effect so we can search for a copy of Rapid Fire. So that's essentially the first combo. And let's move on to the second combo. We're going to start things off by normal summoning the Dragon Bite and then special summon the copy of Resonance. After that, we can proceed to link them both away for a copy of Crystal Hulky Fibrax. This way, we can same block the effect of Crystal Hulky Fibrax and activate the effect of Resonance to search for a copy of Doom Dozer. With the effect of Crystal Hulky Fibrax, we're going to special summon a copy of Sting the Poison. Now we can use the effect of Doom Dozer to balance both the monsters that we have in the graveyard and then activate the effect of Resonance Insect in order to foolish for a copy of Gokipol. This way we can trigger the effect of Gokipol so we can search for a copy of a Soul Roller. Then we can secret away the level 2 and level 8 monsters so we can special summon a copy of Baron the Flare, and after that we can special summon the monster that we searched by banishing a random insect from the grave. Keep in mind that you can get any monster that you banished with the effect of Mighty Neptune later. Lastly, we can link away both the monsters that we have so we can get a copy of Seraphim Papillion. And during our opponent's standby phase, we're going to revive back the copy of Sting the Poison and activate its effect so we can search for a copy of Rapid Fire. Now let's move on to the last combo. Now as you can see this combo is a bit extreme, but let's showcase it. We're going to start things off by normal summoning the Dragon Bite and chaining the effect of Scale Bomber to special summon itself to the field. Then we can special summon the copy of Scout Baggy with the effect of Dragon Bite and use its effect to special summon another copy of itself. After that we can link them both away for a copy of Pick of Alina and then activate the effect of Pick of Alina to discard the card from the hand so we can equip Resonance Insect directly from the deck. It doesn't really matter in which monster we're going to equip it. Now we can use the effect of Dragon Bite to banish a copy of Scout Baggy so we can make the Scale Bomber a level 6, and now since we have a level 4 and a level 6, we can secret both of them away for a copy of Baron. And keep in mind that's also going to trigger the effect of Resonance Insect so we can search for a copy of Doom Dozer. Or if your opponent already used a hand trap, you can go for a copy of Sting Lancer. And after that, we can special summon the copy of Doom Dozer by banishing the copy of Resonance Insect and another insect from the graveyard, 
and here I make a small mistake that I'm going to correct later, I banish a copy of Scale Bomber. And the reason this is a mistake is because we want to special summon it with the effect of Seraphim Papillion later, but we don't have to care about that right now. After we special summon the copy of Doom Daughter, we can use the effect of Resonance Insect to send a copy of Gokipol, and Gokipol effect is going to activate so we can get a copy of Retaliating Seed to the hand. So now we have a searchable interruption during our opponent's turn. You can also use the effect of Picofalina to shuffle back some resources, but in this instance we're not going to use that. Seraph Papillion is going to get two counters, and now I realize that I banished the wrong card, we're going to special summon the copy of Scaled Bomber from the graveyard and banish a copy of Dragon Bites instead. So now we have another interruption during our opponent's turn. I hope this combo will help you understand how to play the deck, and now you can adapt your play depending on the hand. And that's going to wrap up today's deck profile. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'm really looking forward for more OCG support of the archetype once they're getting imported there. Also, if you want to support the channel in any way, shape or form, there are links in the description down below, alongside the link to my Discord server. Until next time, hope you all stay safe, and I will see you in the Shadow Realm. Thank you.